right, what's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so got a difficult one today, but we'll try to get through it here. Let's just let's get started right away because I know it's gonna take a little bit of time. But uh we'll try to keep it loose like I always do, try not to be too detailed. What's going on everybody? Enrique, Jeremy, Joyce, Charlie J, JSA drawing. Uh, Silver Chariot, what's going on everybody? Hopefully everybody heard me. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it looks like halfway is this little piece of land over here. So I'll show you guys a reference photo real quickly. So this is the Golden Gate Bridge in uh, San Francisco. Not my photo, but found it online, free to use commercially. So let's make sure this is kind of the middle. Right on the money. Just guesstimated that too. All right. Feels good. Okay. Uh, what's going on, Nathan? Fernanda, Enrique, SFS Eagle. Hello, Jeremy. What's happening? Charlie, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Like I said, hopefully we can get a good one today challenge it's definitely gonna be a challenge but I'm gonna do my best because that's all I can do you know that's all I can do I'm not really happy with the composition of this thing but uh, unfortunately I didn't really what, what I want to focus on is the bridge so it's kind of an unbalanced photo I kind of recognize that I realize that so maybe I should plan where I want, how I can tweak this thing a bit. So if I make this tower just a little bit larger, like taller in the frame than it actually is on the photo, which means I'm gonna be zooming in a little bit more. Let's try that. Cause nothing, there's nothing taller than this thing. So if I get this thing the size that I want, let's see if we can tweak the composition a little bit. Um, just so that the bridge is more prominent rather than having all this dead space that it's kind of, it, it's unbalanced in a, and not the best way for me. You know, I don't want to change it too much. And there's going to be some challenging, uh, foreshortening here as this bridge bridge goes into the distance. Try to get this perspective best I can. Yeah, this one's definitely this one's definitely challenging. I have an idea in my mind of how to do this one. I've done a similar scene before. Uh, this kind of lighting and stuff. There was one I did from uh, a photo of Venice. I didn't do a live stream of it actually. I did it on my own time a few weeks ago. It's on my website. Uh, Actually, I think I have the photo right here. Actually, let me see. I might have a photo of it. Yeah, there we go. Right there at the bottom left. It's kind of a similar kind of lit scene. The sky should be... That's only... It's kind of cropped. It's a cropped version of it. But uh, go to my website, Shaper Fine Art. You can find a full photo of that one. I have some other stuff on there as well. Check out. But uh, it has a similar kind of lighting, you know, as far as that warm light. So that's what I'm going to be kind of my focus here is this bridge and that warm light I think you know I'm just kind of modifying the composition here just zooming more in on the bridge part so like I said get ridding some of that space it's kind of putting the bridge in the center but it's still off center enough to where it's okay I think let's focus my camera there like a professional <laughs> Bridge has some nice curves. Nice, very curvy. Try to get those in there. Just 
Just working my way through the sketch, folks. Slowly working my way through this. I'll probably still try to add some. I might add that kind of thing in the bottom corner a little bit still to kind of anchor, give a little more depth to the scene. This is the, Mary, this is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. So here's a reference photo. Anybody that might have missed it. So the, the, the water to the left of there, that's actually the ocean. Uh, the hills and stuff, it turns into the coast. It's kind of just cropped off over here. You can't tell, but it's open ocean that way. And then this way is, uh, I live way over this way, many, many miles. And then the city is actually where we're standing. It's kind of where San Francisco is for the most part. Um, Thanks, uh, SFS Eagle. Yeah, some some of them do sell out. Uh, they said, uh, I took a look at your website earlier. I'm surprised by how fast your artwork sells out. Yeah, some of, it depends. You know, some of the paintings, they go very quickly. Like the one I painted last week, last Friday, it literally sold the next day. Somebody perched, it, scooped it up. Um, but a lot of my drawings, no one's really bought any of the drawings. You know, I don't really know why that is. The paintings tend to sell better. I mean, it's it's kind of an interesting uh, interesting study, I guess, in uh, what people like on this on my channel or whatever, what people are attracted to. But uh, yeah, it's it is it is pretty crazy sometimes how quickly they they sell. Either they'll sell right away, or somebody will send me a message going. I, I mean, I've, I, there's been times where I didn't even put it on my website yet, and somebody sent me a message and was like. Are you selling that one? I don't see it on your site yet. I was like, it's like, it's yours. You can have it. Nobody else really said anything. So, yeah. But I appreciate it. I appreciate all the support from everybody. No doubt. It's definitely greatly appreciated. So it looks like we're going to lose some of the... I might make that bigger. I'm not sure yet. I can always paint that larger if I want to. Um, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do. Okay. And we'll kind of keep all these details on the bridge loose, you know, as long as we just suggest them a bit, we'll be fine. Even though this is, it's a pretty iconic bridge, you know, most people in America know it, a lot of people have seen it. But, you know, I can just suggest a lot of these details and it's going to be, it's going to come out fine. Obviously, I do want to be accurate as possible with the shapes and everything uh, and the sizes of things for the most part might need to tweak something right here actually just a little bit these ones on the top are a little too large So this actually comes up to about here. And let's try to make these pretty equal. That looks more like it, I think. Looks pretty funny, you know, like this. It just kind of looks weird because I haven't painted any of it yet, but I think it'll come together, folks. We just be patient. lines will probably be really fun to do hopefully try to get those correct as possible
Uh, Mary asks, Brandon, how do you stay motivated? I start the paint, get frustrated, and walk away for weeks. Um, you know, lately this year, uh, I mean, number one, I, I, my number one rule for me personally is I try to have fun. I try to have fun with it. Because if it sounds like you're not having fun with it, it sounds like you're getting uh, frustrated, as you said. I mean, I get frustrated too sometimes. But at the end of the day, I try to go back to that. You know, I'm having, I'm trying to have fun with this. You know, for me, that's a big thing. Because if I'm not enjoying it, then like, what, what am I doing it for? Like, the reason I got into painting and drawing, especially as a kid, is something I enjoyed to do. You know, I really enjoyed it. So if I'm if I'm kind of breaking that rule, and I realize I'm breaking that rule, then like something's got to change. I gotta I gotta reassess what I'm doing because it's it's not working out. It's not what it should have should be. You know, try try to remember like why did why are you doing it in the first place? Like what is your goal? What are you trying to do? Why did you get into it? For me, that that always does it. You know, I try to think like, all right, I'm supposed to have fun with this. Like, it's supposed to be enjoyable. And sometimes you do it. I mean, I, I've taken breaks before a lot, a lot. You know, I've taken, especially off of YouTube. I mean, there was times in the past where I, I'd stopped for like six months. I just didn't do anything. Just let everything die. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not good to do that. You know, it's not it's not good to do that. Um, I've done that like twice in the last few years. I just quit. I just gave up. I was like, yeah, I'm probably probably just going to give up, I think. Okay, these lines look a little weird. There we go. But now I kind of look at it as a job. I focus on it as a job. I know it doesn't seem fun to do that. But to me, it's like with these live streams, at least, you know, I just try to show up every day. And just do my best, have fun. You know, I always say that all the time. I know you guys hear me. Like, I'm just like, hey, I'm just having fun here. You know, like, I'm not treating this as like a finished drawing. I know there's probably parts that are wrong and off. And, you know, I just have fun. That's my goal. So I think you got to figure out your goal. You know, like, what is, like, are you... Of course, there's other goals too. Like I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to get better at certain things. I'm trying to do this. Trying to do that. But you know, you can't let it get away from you. You know, you can't let it let it stop you from that really first initial goal, that initial reason you have, the why. Like, why are you doing this? I think so many people like. It, and there was years ago when I questioned that a lot. I'm like, man, why am I painting? Like, why am I doing this? Like I had no idea. I was just like, and that, that's when I kind of lost a bit of hope. Cause I was like, man, why am I doing this? Like, I don't even know. Like, what am I doing? Like, why? And yeah, you gotta, you gotta find out what you're, and maybe you don't even have like a big reason or anything. Maybe it's just cause you enjoy it or, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be this grand reason. It's just like, you know, it's something you like to do from time to time and just do it. If you don't like to do it, don't do it. Simple as that, you know. But yeah, staying motivated, I mean, it's really you just can't, you got to stop relying on motivation because motivation is going to disappear, you know. And that's something I struggle with a lot over the years. It's like just, I can't, even if I don't feel motivated, for, like especially for these live streams, if I don't feel motivated, I still try to do it, you know. And then uh, normally you feel better. Like I normally feel better afterwards anyway. Like, man, I'm glad I was productive and did something anyway. All right, I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I changed the kind of composition here. I kind of like how this looks, actually. So that's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, this will all be done in paint anyway. So we're just we're going to paint all this. But I think that's good. The only thing I didn't get enough, I kind of cropped the bottom off a bit. So I could block the this from going off the painting and put like raise the rocks up here. 
Um, I don't know if that's necessary. I could always do that later in the stage because this is like really the darkest part of the painting down here, so I could always move it. Hmm, but I'm not sure. I'm really not sure at this point uh, what the best option is there for that. Because I'm not the best with composition. You know, I try. I, it's something I really need to study more and work on more. But I feel okay about this one, at least. I hope that helped you out, Mary, anyway. Um, hope that answered your question. Hopefully some other folks here. Looks like they're commenting as well, so. How do you feel about vegetables? I think they're cool. I think vegetables are cool. Uh, it's going good, uh, BGR, Mr. Corn. what's happening? Thanks, I appreciate it. SFS Eagle has a really great point. They say, I would use, I would, would recommend you use Pinterest for inspiration. It's an image search engine where you can look up references and photos, whatever you like. It helps me a lot. I have a point on that. I have a very interesting point on that. Something I did years ago. I started searching things on Pinterest for like a week. Like every night I would go in there for a while. And I just started pinning things that I really, really, really liked. And I created different kind of boards. I created an inspiration board. I created a color board. So if I found like a painting or something or like a photo where I just liked the colors of it, you know, or even if I just found like actual color swatches, like color schemes that I liked, I would save those. It has to be stuff you really, really like. So you do this for like a week or two, maybe a month. Just start pinning stuff, saving stuff like paintings that you like, photos that you like, whatever it is. Stuff that you really, really like. Not stuff that you kind of like. It has to be stuff that you really, really like. And the reason is, after a while, when you do this, uh, after you do it for a week or whatever, you go on these boards and you look at your color board, you look at your inspiration board or painting inspiration or whatever boards you, you kind of section up that you create. And now you can scroll through, look at all these images. You'll start to see... Maybe I knew I noticed for myself personally, I noticed a correlation. So I noticed all the colors I was saving were very warm colors. They were, um, I liked gray, neutral, kind of earthy, earth tone colors, and I liked warm versus cool color schemes like blue and, and orange and stuff like that. And when I realized this, I was like, ah, oh, okay. Because then I could look at my own paintings, my own work that I'd already done, and I was like, wow, I kind of see a... I do like, I am attracted to warm colors. I really, and I, I figured that out. And then I realized, like, this, these are things that I should be using in my paintings to create, to help better portray my style, what I'm interested in, what I like. Like I like warm colors, I'm attracted to that. So that should, be, and I like certain kind of lighting scenarios, dappled light or strong sunlight. Like these are the kind of things I should be like putting into my work. So it, it's it's an interesting thing to try and just see what you're attracted to if you don't know and what you like if you don't know already. But that's something I did. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna, we're gonna start painting here folks now. We're gonna get into the painting. But uh, before I get into the painting real quick here, I just want to remind you guys to like, share, and subscribe these videos, these live streams with your friends and your family, all that kind of stuff. Greatly appreciated. Also, check out my website, shaperfineart.com. If you're new here, uh, you can see pen and ink drawings that I do every other day. Also, I do these watercolors every other day. We kind of alternate. Uh, but you can check out kind of the whole library of what I've done so far on my website. They're all for sale. You can also check out, I have a support page on there. And you can donate to me if you like my work. If you want to keep supporting the channel, I have a Patreon page as well and a band camp where I create music on my own time and from my YouTube channel. If you watched any of my videos, you've probably heard some of my music that I've created over the last two or three years. So I greatly appreciate all the support. But we're going to get into this 
painting now. I thought of starting out with the sky, but I think I'm gonna change my mind. So what I'm gonna do first, actually, I think, I'm gonna start out with this lighting area. So what I'm gonna do first is put down some, cause it, cause it doesn't really interrupt any of the other washes that I'm gonna to plan to do. And I, I need to preserve this white. So I'm gonna get some yellow ochre and maybe even some, yeah, let's do yellow ochre. I think that's, that looks like a good color for this actually. And I'm gonna, I need clean color. So I'm gonna clean my palette real quick right here. Okay. And we got some clean yellow ochre. What I'm gonna do is start off, I'm gonna leave white space right on the bridge. As we can see, it's very white there. We're gonna keep that and we're just gonna paint some, uh, and it looks very dark. We're gonna lighten it up though. I'm gonna paint this bridge, at least the bottom part as well. Just yellow ochre. We'll go back over it with the wash of red and blend everything. But for right now, I, I wanted to get some of this warmth in here and kind of just start out with Start out with a little bit of, just a little bit of warmth here. So I can keep some of this yellow. As the painting progresses. Oh man, that color looks awful on the camera here, but it's definitely more of a red yellow than it looks. It looks kind of green on this, unfortunately, on this camera. I always talk about that though. Okay. Trust me, folks, looks fine. Looks fine from where I'm sitting here. I don't want to put my music like background right now because I don't want it to be distracting to for you guys. I don't really know how I would do that. I'd have to like play it on my phone or something. It would sound stupid. Um, but I mean, you can go check out my music if you want on the Bandcamp or whatever. But yeah, I hope, hope that helped you guys like the Pinterest thing. I mean, Pinterest is huge for uh, inspiration like that and trying to figure out what you actually like, what you're interested in. You know, it's very easy to just figure that kind of thing out. And that's something I kind of ran into because you end up finding these correlations over time. It's very powerful to add into your own work to try to know yourself a little bit more if you're not sure what you're interested in and what, what inspires you. That was something I kind of found out. I'm gonna get some cadmium red here too. I want to, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix a little bit of yellow ochre with it. Actually, I'm gonna get yellow ochre and mix a little bit of cadmium red into it. That's what I'm trying to say. And we'll just, we'll kind of start giving a little more heat where necessary. You know, just a little bit to get me this figured out. Oh man, I wish I had a better camera for this thing for color. I'm really not happy with the 
colors this thing portrays. Trust me, you guys will see the photo, the final photo of this one on my website or on the thumbnail after this video. It's going to look, it looks way different than what it's showing right now. I'm trying to see if I can get the color to change a bit here. Sometimes the camera will adjust the white balance a bit. But anyway, all right, let's get into, uh, let's try to, let's do a wash over this thing. Do you know why you prefer warm colors? I don't really know. Uh, that's a good question, Cubs Win. I think I'm just attracted naturally to like, like this photo, you know, like these warms against these cools, these, these oranges and reds, these yellows. The warmth. I mean, I, I personally, I like being warm. I don't really like being in cold weather and cold. So maybe that's part of it. But I think like visually, I think a lot of people are attracted to warm, really warm colors visually. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I don't know why I prefer warm colors. Actually, it's just kind of a yeah, that's a good question, actually. Very good question. Why do I prefer warm colors? I think it's just a natural, just what I go towards, you know. It's almost like asking, like, why do you think, why do you like the taste of that kind of food or something? And you say, well, because it's sweet or something. Well, why do you like sweet? You know, it's like, oh, it, it's it's good. You know, I think it's just good. But yeah, it's it's a hard question to answer. I think it's kind of difficult for me. But definitely, that's a good question, though. I really wish I could go over this bridge, but I'm kind of afraid to. Um, at least the bottom part here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I can wash over this bridge, but I'm going to do it anyway. It looks like it's darker. I mean, it's definitely darker than the sky, at least at the top. Hmm. Adding a little bit of warmth to the sky over here. And uh, I'll probably add some uh, purples and clouds and stuff to it uh, in a bit. Or very soon, actually. This all doesn't have to be perfect. We'll just paint that in there. Let's get uh, a bit of alizarin, ultramarine blue, maybe some uh, ultramarine violet deep. <laughs> Philip, yeah, some people do have that fear of like going over a bridge. No, I've, I've been over it a few times actually, in person quite a few times. I meant going over it, like painting over it, but yeah. I get what you're saying, because you actually live near there, so it makes sense why you would think that. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So I'm trying to make sure I go dark enough here because, yeah, just want to make sure. It's going to dry. I know it always dries a little bit lighter. And I don't really want to go over it again. <laughs> Okay, we gotta lighten this part up. Come on. We need a softer edge here. Just kind of 
I'll spray that twice. Which direction do I want this cloud to be in? Yeah. much water there. Don't worry folks, we're just in the beginning phase here, so not too not too concerned. You guys know I always somehow try to pull this stuff together. Cause that bridge will be much darker, everything's gonna come together. This will all dry lighter. Not too concerned. Okay. A little too much water and stuff, but not bad, not bad. We'll keep going. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Yep, exactly, Mary. Just have have fun and and yep. You know, try not to maybe challenge yourself, but try to do something more loose and not so detailed. Like try to actually force yourself to like not even worry about the details or be perfectionist like and it might drive you crazy but that's kind of the point like try to push yourself to like try to see just as an exercise maybe try to approach a painting and just be like all right this one just gonna do have just complete fun like all, all it is only to have fun that's it like try to get rid of the stress of, of needing it to be a certain way, you know, like this painting, I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. Like I could get bummed out about the sky and some of the water marks and stuff, but I'm just going to keep going. You know, I'm just going to, we'll see what ends up happening. We'll just continue on here painting, try to figure this thing out. But yeah, I hope it hope it goes well, Mary. Don't don't be too hard on yourself. Just do your best and you know, you'll figure it out, I'm sure. Okay, Just spraying my palette there, folks. A little bit of water. This is still a little damp, but I think that will work nicely, actually. Get a soft edge back there for this mountain, for this hill. So I'm kind of just working my way down the painting, like just going from sky, going down. So we'll see how this turns out. There's a link to the brush in the uh, chat there, the quill brush that I'm using. So definitely check that out. <clears throat> yep, 
Yeah, I wish my process was a little more helpful because I know it's very, I have an intuitive process, just very bizarre, you know. I don't really know how actual watercolorists would work through this one. I'm just kind of... Just doing my thing. I'm like, alright, well, I think this is the way to do it. So let's try it. <laughs> I don't really know. So I'm going to lighten this part up slightly so that we get more of a light effect around here. Try to anyway. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah. I definitely didn't want to do that. Oh well. Alright, let's leave that. Leave that be. Oh, too much color. Too much color there. Gonna add more red and alizarin as it gets closer to this bridge so that we get more of a warmth of the light effect. What do you think is the best way to approach color in these types of paintings? I tend to oversimplify, oversimplify the values too often. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Uh, the color? How to approach the color? But then you talked about values. I mean, I think the value here is very important, mostly. Um, getting that light effect. I'm, I'm focused on color temperature. So you can see the cool's back here. It's almost too cool, too light, but I'm gonna stick with it for now. I can always glaze that later if I want. Um, but I'm, I'm focused on like color temperature. That's kind of how I try to always think about it. How warm something is compared, compared to things around it, how warm and cool it is. So that's, that's how I tend to approach color. As we can see here, I got all this warm around this area cooler and grayer around, you know, as it moves out from that. So that's, that's kind of how I go about it, I guess, the color and the, the value just kind of follows that, you know, I just try to focus on the, the light effects and stuff that I'm trying to, to get, I guess. Yeah, I just dripped all over the paint. Gotta stop doing that, you gotta slow down. There we go. Okay, um, did you use wet on wet technique? You know, I don't really even know, to be honest. I don't really keep up with all the techniques I'm using. I mean, I did use wet into wet up here. Um, I mean, I'm blending using wet into wet here, I guess. I don't know. Um, that, that's, the, that's the problem with my technique is I just kind of, I intuitively go about it, I, you know. If I see that something needs to be like blended, then I'll, then I know what to do. But I don't think like, okay, now here I'm gonna use wet into wet. I don't really think about it like that. I mean, obviously that's what ends up happening, but it's just kind of a thing that, 
you know, it's like throwing a baseball or something. It's not like, okay, now I'm going to put my arm back and throw it. It's like you kind of, you just pick up the ball and you just throw it, you know. For me, I just pick up the paintbrush and I just paint it. You know, I just, it's kind of what ends up happening. But I, I like using dry on wet a lot more usually. Um, but there, there are some times when I use a lot of wet into wet. It just depends. But for yeah, for me, it's it's just it's very intuitive, you know. I think that's the whole thing for me. It's just intuitive process. I'm just going over this one little part here. I'm just kind of bringing it more forward. I want it to match the value of this over here to some extent. I know, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know what wet into wet is. I know it's wet paper with wet, yeah, I know. I'm just saying I don't think about it like that, that much. Well, you're blending colors is wet into wet. Yeah, exactly, that's, yeah, I, that's what I thought, but. Did I ever invest in a hair dryer? No, I have this, I just have this little fan. I use that, it works fine. Bridge kind of looks yellow on screen. <laughs> Yeah, I paint it is it is yellow right now. I haven't painted the red part yet. Uh, what's going on, Rava Suwandi? Rava Suwandi from Indonesia. What's happening? The birds look here. <laughs> oh man, I haven't gotten to it yet, man. Just haven't gotten to it. That's all. Okay. Um, thanks, Gabby Sketch. I appreciate it. I'm working on. I'm gonna go dig to the water now. Um, we'll try to get this thing blocked in a bit, and then I'll focus on the bridge a bit more. But let's see, I need to mix up a lot of color here for this water, I think. Let's not be timid about this, you know what I mean? Uh, Viridian, Viridian, Ultramarine Blue, a little bit of purple. Mostly blue though, let's see, blue green. Okay, there we go feel good about that. Let's try to, because it's a pretty dark value, so I want to be able to cover it the first time, you know. Um, so what do we got going on here? Just got, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing, uh, there's more shadows under here. It gets red and pink and warm. So I got to keep some of this and some of this. Okay. I think I got it. No, it's all good, Michael. It's all good. <laughs> it was just funny. But uh, yeah, we're getting there. This is just, you know, I'm, I'm just working through the process here. So we got, I still have more, uh, more, more ways to go for sure. More to go. Didn't mean to make fun of your statement. It, it just, it seemed funny to me in the moment. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, because I, I only did part of the bridge so far. I want to do the dark reds and stuff on top. Um, uh, the bridge here is actually darker than the water, so I think I'm going to just, we'll just extend that over feel confident about doing that. I'm kind of doing this pretty slowly, unfortunately. I'm just, yeah, I don't want any hard edges. Just trying to make sure I, um, 
Not ruining anything here. I'm already running out of color. Oh no. Alright, I'm going to spray this just to keep it wet for a little bit longer. That'll just give me a little bit more time. It's pretty hot in my apartment. I always keep it pretty warm, so things tend to dry very quickly when I'm painting. And usually I like that. I like stuff drying quickly, um, normally. But for something like this... I'm going to take my time a little bit more here. So now this is where I'm going to use some alizarin very quickly if I can. And some cadmium red as well. Okay, we need some more like orange. We need some yellow ochre in this. Cadmium red. Maybe some Indian yellow too, possibly. So I'm trying to blend all these colors together. That's what I'm trying to focus on doing right now. And we need some more dark color for this water. So it's a bit darker down here. Ooh, a little warm there. Try not to add any extra water. I'm just trying to add pigment. There we go. Trying to match the values a bit more. Darker back here. Let's try that a little bit. Trying to be quick here, folks. This is. Oh, come on. It's all time focused, you know? It's all time focused. Okay, this part doesn't really matter. Okay. This is actually all dark. Okay. Making progress, making progress. Yep, you're right. Princeton Neptune Quill Mop. Yeah, I love this thing. This thing is my favorite brush. I use it for like everything. But yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. I think we're doing well. I think we're doing all right now. Uh, I did miss some of the water over here. We gotta get that in there. 
Just gonna mix up a little more color here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Try to keep the edges soft near the, the edge. I like that. What I'm gonna do is just, for now, I'm just gonna add a quick, just a quick layer here, just to give me an idea where I'm at, try to fill up as much white as I can on the paper for now. Okay, you can see we're starting to get the values, starting to get a light effect here. Let me try to see if I can get this thing to look good at all on this screen. Not really. <clears throat> thing I kind of missed actually I missed one little spot here of uh, hmm it is darker than the mountains so I should have added that in there but it's all right we're gonna have the I don't have the bridge right over it but I just needed a little bit more there okay Good, 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 good. Coming along, coming along. The sky's probably a little too light, actually. I knew that was gonna happen. It always happens. But it's okay. We'll keep it how it is. Too late now to really work, worry about it. Let's dry this thing up real quick. I'll try to answer some of the questions if there was anything I may have missed or whatever. Um, bunch of people using all caps or something uh, and spamming what is more important in art to get the accuracy of objects or getting the feel maybe a dumb question I don't know well Guram that is not a dumb question that's a very good question um, you know it depends on your goal in art you know if, if you're concerned a lot about accuracy then go for accuracy um, for me, I like getting the feel, and I try to be as accurate as possible, but when it comes to colors and these kinds of things, you can tweak it. You know, there's things you can, you can mess with it, you can tweak it a little bit, and, you know, kind of use your own feeling, put your own feeling into it, you know. I don't really have this part very accurate at all, but I like how it looks. I like the feeling of it, it looks cool to me. There's still a lot more that needs to be done here. I just want to dry this up first before I move on to anything else. What is the hardest part of learning art? Well, the hardest part is, uh, I think Jeffrey asked that question. Yes, Jeffrey. Well, the hardest part of learning art is, um, is, is just being consistent you know, not giving up. Yeah, I don't know, you know, I, I think the techniques and stuff are pretty straightforward. I mean, it's easy to learn that stuff, but it's hard to learn to keep going and to not give up and to not get discouraged. And really, the, I think the mental aspect behind art is the psychological aspect is more difficult for people, it seems. When did you start watercoloring? Well, I did watercolors first back in 2009, 2010, and that was it. And then I did acrylics for a while and oils for a while. 
And then I started watercoloring back in 2018. And I was just doing these small kind of sketches from life. Yeah, acrylics, I, I used acrylics for a little while, but um, I kind of, once I used oil paint, I didn't really like acrylics at all. Like it's so hard to spread the paint and it feels sticky and it's just really annoying. But oils, gouache and watercolor, I agree. I think those are, those are the ones I use too. Or I, I don't use oils anymore. I use gouache every once in a while, watercolor a lot. And I use pen and ink. I like pen and ink drawings. But as far as painting, I used to use oils, but I just, I got away from using oils, but. All right, this is pretty dry. Let's go on. Let's make this thing good, right? How far are we into this? All right, almost one hour. So let's try to finish this thing up, hopefully in two layers, maybe. <laughs> this will be the second layer, I'll call it. I try to start dark if I can, you know, if, if the painting like this, when it's more dark, try to just go for it, you know. But I think I'm gonna work on the bridge a bit. And look at this, I'm gonna use a smaller brush for once. I don't really like using this thing that much, but I think for this, it's necessary. I think we need, I need a smaller brush here. So I'm just getting some cadmium red, and I'm gonna start around this light area and work my way up to the dark. But I'm actually gonna, gonna warm up a bit first here. What I mean by that is I'm, just, I'm gonna start a little bit of red down here. Just kind of see what I'm working with. Um, looks a lot darker on the screen for some reason. Yeah, it's really hard to get this thing exposed correctly, but uh, it's all right. This is all gonna be darker. Do a wash over that real quick. Okay. Feel feel all right. So I'm gonna actually start off with cadmium red with a little bit of yellow ochre into it because we want to fade out from that golden light. So I want to start out probably just yellow ochre by itself maybe or just a little hint of red in there with it Let's see if we can make this look nice yeah I don't want to be too detailed here but This is my focal point, so I just want to be careful with the way I put some things down. I'm going to soften some of the edges here, try to fade this out and down ever so slightly. Because at the end, end of the day, I'm trying to I'm trying to get this light effect. That's what that's kind of my goal for this painting here is this light effect on the bridge that's what really drew me to this scene so if I can somehow keep that And it, the the effect will become more apparent as I, I start adding in the darks because this painting it's all kind of mid tone right now. There's not a whole lot of dark in it, um, so I'm going to start adding up here. We'll get into just red. We need more red. Maybe a little touch of blue into it as well. Start getting.
We're getting into the darker reds here. I feel like we need some red by itself. Right, there we go. Thanks for uh, tuning in, Tom Cat. Tom Cat. I'm sure he's probably already gone, but uh, Quinacridone Gold. I do not own Quinacridone Gold actually. So it's def definitely not that one. Which one are you referring to? This light here, or this color, or? I have I've been using uh, cadmium red, yellow ochre, stuff like that. It's a little wider. I just realized it's a little wider than uh, than the actual photo. So that's unfortunate, but it's okay. You know what? We just keep going. Sometimes I do that, man. I realize the drawing is off by the time, once I start painting it, I'm like, oh man, the drawing is off. But like I said, we'll have some fun here and just focus on the lighting effect, you know? But it's not too bad. What are you gonna do, you know? So can't do anything about it now. We just keep moving, keep going, finish the painting and uh, learn from the experience, you know. So I'm pretty happy with the like the light effect that's going on. So that's cool at least, but you know, like I said, the proportions a little off. I, I really would probably would have just made it taller if, since I made it this wide and that would have fixed the proportions. But once I painted it like this, you can't really change it. So we just continue on and uh, I'm just going to repeat the same thing I did with this one. I'm just going to use it do pretty much what I just did with this one back here. There's a little bit of yellow ochre with cadmium red. And um, yep, that's all I can do. But, uh,
I need to go plain air, paint this thing from plain air. That's what I've been planning to do for quite a while. Just haven't gotten around to doing that. But I do want to try to do that one day for my plain air videos. Go paint this thing plain air. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Be a fun adventure. What's going on everybody? Uh, who's my favorite artist? Uh, it's hard to say man, I don't know. I don't know, probably John Singer Sargent or something like that. Yeah. I don't really I don't really have favorite artist. You know, there's a lot of artwork that I like from certain artists, but it's hard to like say like that's my favorite artist, you know. Try to go, try to finish the rest of this bridge. We'll just go underneath. Try to be a little loose with application here. The application of paint. It's a little lighter on this side. There's kind of a light under there, so just want to kind of show that effect if I can. It's a little bit of warmth there. Who do you take inspiration from? Uh, there's a few artists that are alive. Watercolorist, uh, Joseph Sabukvich, uh, Alvaro Castanet, Castanet, however you say his name. I don't know how to say it, but you know, there's guys like that. There's a lot of people on Inst Instagram stuff that I see, but I, to be honest, the, you know, nowadays I kind of, I don't really, 
I just do my thing <laughs> mostly, you know, I don't really take a whole lot of inspiration anymore, to be honest. Maybe I should do that more, I don't know, but it's just not something I do that much. I just come on these live streams, make some art, I do some plein air videos every once in a while, whenever I can do them. And uh, I just do my own thing. Try to, you know. All right, I think this one's coming together. You know, I'm, I'm happy with the lighting effect at least. I know the proportions are a little off, but at least we got the lighting effect. Yeah, Sergeant's watercolors are really good. I really love his watercolors. That's kind of who I get a lot of inspiration from. If I do look at stuff, that's probably some that I, you know, I haven't looked at his in a long time, but that's one that I do look at. Because he paints very simply, you know, just bold strokes, and and his paintings are kind of bigger than the ones I do, but helps me keep keep things loose, you know. Why am I using this tiny brush? I got to get off, and get stop using this thing. up this edge if I can. Do you think you need expensive art supplies to make good art? No, you definitely don't. I mean, you should see the watercolors when I started two years ago and I was using, you know, not that great paint and you know, using good good paper is, is definitely good to have, but it's not necessary. I use crappy paper sometimes too, and you can do some great paintings, you know. But that being said, there's some materials that do make, that can increase the quality a little bit of your art, but it's not what makes good art. It, it's, it's, you know, it's it's kind of, it's these principles, you know, that we've been talking about value and color and edges and all that kind of stuff. That's what subject matter, composition, all those things play more of a part than just the quality of your materials. Like, you don't have to have the best brushes or the best, you know, this is a cheap, you know, $10 brush that I have. I used to use like crappy free brushes that I had, you know, like uh, uh, there's, yeah, it doesn't really matter, that kind of stuff. All right, so we need a shadow under here to kind of ground everything. It's kind of, everything's kind of floating and, and very not described. I've been working on the on the bridge a lot. I still have a little more to do here, but I know it's not complete yet. We're getting there though. The more we keep working on this thing and we are an hour and 15 minutes in. All right, we're making okay time. We're doing all right. Definitely got to finish this thing soon. So there we go, a few little strokes. Don't even have to, you know, not describing a whole lot there. Just that kind of tells what's happening, you know? I wish more of that alizarin would show through. Let's see if I can glaze some of that in there. Some more alizarin here. more
Okay, I gotta get rid of this small brush. This thing is annoying. This is this is not good. It's not doing me any good using this thing. All right, let's go back to this quill. I feel like we get some work done with this thing. Still need to do these little lines and stuff. It's okay. Um, yeah, this is watercolor paper. Um, Cubs Win says, I know of a professional artist who uses throwaway brushes and his art is awesome and sells out. Yeah, I do the same thing. Actually. I've sold a lot, a few paintings, a few paintings myself this year, and uh, I don't use the best brushes either. I mean, I have some good ones now, but you know, in the past I was using where, you know, using these that like, you know, not that great, you know, <laughs> like I use these for like two years. I just now bought these this year, this new, these new brushes that I have. But yeah. Materials help, but they're not going to magically transform your art. You got to know how to use them. That's the difference. So I think like this stuff needs to be darker here, these hills. So I'm going to push those a little bit now. Just working my way through this painting, folks. We're getting there. Definitely getting there, at least. But it looks like, at least here, it just needs to be just a bit darker. Just want to change that shape a little bit. I like that a bit more. Mm, okay. Yeah, the sky the sky is a little too light, but I really don't feel like going over that again. I don't think I can touch it again, unfortunately. So I'm just looking at what my options are here. Um, it still looks it still looks like unfinished painting to me. So there's, there's definitely more I still need to. More that needs to be done. What you do when you make when you make horrible art and you hate it? Do you burn it? <laughs> no, I, I just keep it. Just keep it. Just put it away in a closet somewhere. But um, you, know, you can look at it in a year or two, and it'll you'll see how much you actually progress. You know, I have a lot of my old art that uh, isn't that great, and sometimes eventually I throw it away. You know, because it's like, eh, I'm not going to keep it forever. And no one's gonna buy it or anything, so I just throw it away, not waste any time on it. Uh, but I, you know, I try to photograph it at least and keep photos of it and stuff. But yeah, sometimes I just get rid of that stuff.
Okay. I'm getting tired of this one already. <laughs> this painting is a little, getting a little too detailed. Let me uh, step back. I think we need some more definition on the water, of course. I'm gonna add some warmth here in the water down, down here. Try to blend some of this together. Do you ever draw from your imagination? A lot of great artists like Kim Jong G do it all the time and his art turns out to be amazing. Uh, I don't too often. Um, I thought about getting a sketchbook just for like doodling, like trying and see what comes out of my head. So I might, I might be doing that soon just as, as an exercise to see what happens, but I don't really um, do it out of my head. <laughs> Cubs win says sprinkles. You mean like splatters? I need some, should I do like some, uh, do some splatters. Yeah, probably. It might. Um, well, the light is actually coming from the bridge. There's like cars on the bridge and street lights and stuff. But um, it's a little, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Don't know if I like it yet. I'm still debating in my head. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. Always happens with every painting I do. I'm like, man, what am I doing? <laughs> Trying to figure this out. Okay. Yeah, this one was more difficult than I anticipated. Kind of always happens, of course. Always end up doing that. Don't know how, but it always happens. Okay, let's uh, let's get serious here, folks. Let's get serious. Do I ever get frustrated? Yeah, I'm frustrated right now. <laughs> You're witnessing it. <laughs> You're witnessing the frustrate, the silent frustration. You're definitely witnessing it.
Yeah, I agree, Philip. Yeah, the Eiffel Tower is difficult too. I've tried drawing that in the recent past, quite recent past, and that was that was difficult. It's definitely a pain. So I feel your pain. I know that one. I think all the little got all these little struts and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that was a pain. Man, this thing looks horrible on the screen, but it doesn't look much better in real life either. <laughs> it looks a little better in real life, but okay. The bridge still looks unfinished to me. I feel like I need, what do I need? We need the little, let's put these little lines on there. Where's my tiny brush? Let's try to do these in one stroke if I can, hopefully. Maybe dry brush these a bit too. I don't know. Let's see. Well, let's go for it. We'll try. We'll try here. Try to do these lines. Can't really see the sketch that I did, so that's going to be fun. Always love just. Doing something like this. <laughs> okay. Um, ever draw the Statue of Liberty? No, I have not. Um, the Silent Frustration, that's a good book title. <laughs> there you go, you're welcome. <laughs> hmm. Suspension lines, yep, yep, cables. Uh, okay. Oh boy, all right, all right, all right, come on, you can do this, you can do this. So this comes down to there. Not bad. Wish I could have done it faster. Okay, yeah, it's better to just do it in one stroke and leave it. I kind of like that that one did a lot of dry brushing because it's kind of the light is coming through it. Theoretically, so kind of this atmosphere of light, you know, it's gonna make it look a little bit lighter instead of being so dark That's my my theory anyway Because I'm a scientist Oh see I did two strokes there it didn't look right. Ah, why'd I do that? One stroke and leave it one stroke and leave it At least try to do that. Try to do one stroke and leave it. A missing one. Okay, missing one. I'm sure you guys are pointing that out right now. I'm not looking at the chat, but I'm sure somebody's saying it. You missed one! Okay, okay, okay. That one goes to there. Okay, so this one I gotta do multiple because it goes behind. structure here. Ah. That one sucks. Continuity of that one sucks. Oh, darn it. I 
shouldn't have had the big dark spot right there. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can make it worse. Yeah, <laughs> definitely can do that. Darn it! Darn it! Darn it! Darn it! All right, feel better about it now. do that that ruined it <laughs> gosh darn it man I don't think I don't think I can get rid of that one okay maybe I can a little bit of perspective issue there should have been way down here here, this one should have come out more. Ah, oh well. Not the greatest ever, not the perfect painting. We know that, we know this is not the perfect painting. This was a challenge, definitely a challenge. Hopefully we can all recognize that. Okay, just trying to give a little light effect to some of these. I'm just using a wet, my wet paper towel here, basically, or washcloth that I use. I want to lighten up them near the bottom. Something like that, I guess. All right, what else, man? What else? Because this is, let's finish this thing. What else? I'm not even going to look at the photo that much anymore. Let's just, what? what is it? need darks here darks here definitely needs Help to give a little more depth to this thing. We'll just add a tiny bit of texture there. Soften a few edges or something. Um,
give a little more structure to this bridge, I guess. Still got the light effect there. Just wanted to solidify that shape a little bit more. Ah, oh, I don't know. Okay, uh, what is this? is this dry under here? Pretty dry. A little dark under here too. It kind of sticks out too much. Well, I don't know. I don't know what to say, folks. What do you guys think? Is it coming together slowly? Just trying to fix a few little things that I see that I can. Making, bringing that light effect in just a little more concentrated around this tower. So how do you relax after these online sessions? LOL, a bottle of wine? No, I don't. <laughs> I go and eat something, pretty much. And just chill out. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm almost two hours into this one. I'm about 20 minutes away from two hours, so probably gonna end this one soon. It's not perfect, you know. I messed up some of the cable lines and stuff, but you know, I don't know. Um, I think you know maybe we can add like a little bit of splattering down here just to give it some texture. I feel like it's what am I missing? It's missing like something. There's something there. It's just. something that bothers me about it. I think I realize what it is. I'm gonna try it anyway. I think this is too light still because it's the same value as the water. So let's darken it just a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. Um, there are vertical cable lines, are there? Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna put those in, man. I, I th yeah. uh, what could I do for those? You're right, there are, there are. Should I just lightly suggest some of those going down? It almost changes the whole value of it. Um, at least the ones in the distance. Yeah, I'm afraid of those. Those scare me, to be honest. But you're right, they are kind of there. They are part of the bridge. Hmm. 
Hmm. Maybe wash purple in the sky to the left top. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really want to mess with the sky anymore, to be honest. Suggest them in the foreground. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Let's try and do it. I'll try to do it pretty lightly, I guess. We'll see. We'll just do like... Other ones like that. It's kind of hard to see, but... I don't want to make them too prominent like I am right now. Gosh, darn it, man. Not too bad, I guess. Um, I'll do a few here, yeah. I'll just have them disappear as they go down towards the light. That's probably what I thought it was missing earlier, I just didn't know. Alright. I guess that kind of helps a bit more, huh? Okay, what did Tim say? Somebody agrees with Tim. Where is Tim? Oh, here we go. Take artistic license with that rock, bring it up more. The, that corner of the bridge still looks curvy, not straight. Hmm. Well, it is, it is curvy, actually. I mean, the corner of the bridge is curvy, but... Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's fine. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um... You know, if I brought it up... Yeah, whatever. Let's do it. You guys say I should do it at this point? Let's just do it. Because I don't know. I've been looking at this thing too long. What do I know? I mean, it looks different on camera, you gotta re remember that one. But, there you go. It's actually a lot lighter, it's just that it's dark, it's wet right now, so it looks different.
One last time. One last time. Paint this stupid shadow. Yeah, this one really, this one really lacks a lot of texture. It's kind of bothers me, unfortunately. But you know, this stuff looks very flat back here. Um, maybe that's what's really bothering me. I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but probably need to go darker on top of it, but it just needs like some atmosphere or something. There's just too, it's too flat. It's too wet to paint on right now anyway, but Okay I guess let's take tape off and see what it looks like because I don't know what else to do with it. So At this point clean edges now. I'll show it to you guys on the webcam just so it's get rid of this. I'll show you on a different crappy camera. Uh, so there we go. There it is. Not bad I guess. I think this part's a little strange right here. I think I need to fix that because it looks it's one thing that sticks out to me when I look at it like this. That's the one thing that sticks out is that little part there. It's like it needs to be darker. It needs to be darker. Yeah, that's, that's more of the idea, I think. Oh, 
All right, well, you know what? Not my greatest work ever, but it's finished at least. I'm glad that's over. Um, this is probably my favorite part, this little transition here, a little nice color transition. You guys can see more of the colors there of what it really looks like. I did that area. Went from the white to the yellow ochre, pale, and then the pale colors to the stronger ones. That's really my favorite part, but the rest of this, yeah, you know, whatever. Not my favorite. Not my favorite. Um, yeah. Definitely not my strongest work. I mean, you guys have seen some watercolors I've done. This one's, you know, I've done some better. I've done some better stuff, you know, no doubt. But I guess that's not what it's about. It's just about kind of take my own advice. Like I said earlier, you know, just have some fun. We get on here, we do it and see what happens. Can't always win it. Can't always win them all, but try to create some good work and uh, learn from it, you know learn from this process because that's all I can really do but anyway What are my favorites? My favorite what? Favorite watercolors I've done and stuff? I mean, here's one. This one just sold recently, but I mean, I feel like this one's, I think it's just, it's a different kind of subject, but it, this one's a lot sketchier. I just, I like it better, you know? Like this one to me, I like the colors. I think this one I got too, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. There's something about it I don't like. I think I went too colorful in some areas, and uh, instead of being gray, it's just a different, you know. Uh. You know, here's one of my favorites that I've done, you know no doubt and this portrait was pretty good that i did so i mean i got some some that i've done in the past that i really enjoy really like but this one it's just it's lacking i mean if you look at it, it's just lacking something to me you know everything is so smooth and i'm used to a lot of texture a lot of things happening and a lot of life and stuff and this one it just it's it seems flat everything seems very flat and needs more something you know Maybe more line work. We need like a little more line work here to kind of bring out some things. I don't know. You know, even even this one, I thought, I did this one a few weeks ago. I thought I didn't really like it, but this is, I like this one too. This is one of my favorites. And this one's okay too. But, you know, it's just that I'm used to more texture, I think. More texture. And this one, it's it's just, I need... I need more, I need more, something. You guys see what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? Like, there's something, does anybody else feel like that? Like it's missing something that these other ones have? Maybe it's the softness versus the texture and hardness or the sketchiness. This one, it, it feels too rigid almost and, and it's like it's, it's missing something. Well, I mean, this one has a lot of distance. I mean, there's there's ones I painted that have a lot of distance. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe this should have been softer back here rather than so hard. Kind of messed that up, I think. Um, I don't know. Maybe the sky darker, yeah. The, the problem on camera, it looks, the sky looks very bright. In real life, the sky isn't that bright. The sky is kind of like that. But if I go over that sky again, 
you know, I don't know. I don't know. It would help the light effect, but I really risk, I really risk the whole painting if I do that. Yeah, you're right, Philip. It's missing the nude beach out of frame. <laughs> yeah, they do have that there. Um, what brand of watercolor paint and paper do you use? I use Arches 140 pound cold press paper and I use M. Graham paints. Do you guys think I should go over the sky one more time? I mean, it's gonna be very difficult because I already have this bridge and everything up front. You know, the only thing I could really do is maybe push the clouds a bit darker. Or at least part of the clouds, so maybe it would help the light effect glow a little bit more. Um, you know, what, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I really want to just be done with this one because we're two hours in now, exactly, so... Movement, maybe highlights on the water or illumination or of the bridge. Yeah. Well, it's hard to add highlights now. I can't really, there's nothing I can really do in that department. If you guys are wondering what I'm doing, I'm just kind of adding some like dark accents and stuff. I'm trying to bring, not like detail, but just more something. You guys say leave it, don't overwork. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's a uh, it's too I think I'm too far into it to say not overwork. I think I've already overworked the thing. That's the problem. Yeah, I think that maybe that's exactly the point. And I think my other ones I've done were not overworked. Maybe this one just is overworked. Gosh, you guys can't even not even see what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't know, I just added these little things. Looks cool, like that. Actually, I kind of like that, just... I don't know what it is. Street lights, street poles, people, I don't know. But it's kind of helping bring something to this thing. Maybe there, maybe it just needed more dimension. That's what it's been missing. But yeah, I'm pretty close to being done with this thing. I'm just, I've already know, I know I've already overworked it, so I'm kind of just seeing, like, I'm just pushing it to be like, all right, what, what maybe was it missing? What else could help this thing, you know, so. But I kind of like that more, you know, I think I like that more. It's kind of hard for you guys to see it, but I can see it pretty well where I'm at. Oh, the painting's going all right. 
decayed, but uh, not too well. Oh, okay, white gel pen and white gouache, gra add in some lights. Yeah, that's true. I could do that with like the white, um, I have some white watercolor. I could do that if I wanted to. Where do, what lights should I add in? There's some lights under here and the lights over here. Is that what you're talking about? Are the light poles? Yeah, I think to me it's just missing that kind of textural element, you know. That's what that's what I'm trying to add to it. I'm trying to give it a little more interest around the focal point, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Cubs win. They said, uh, so Nathan, we all, we all talk about overwork and you work on some paintings for a hundred hours. Yeah, that's, that's true. But his come out, they don't really look overworked when he does his. Let's see if we add like a little, some lights over here. Maybe some like that's kind of cool, huh? You guys think about that? We're just using watercolor, just white, or uh, it's not exactly white, but it's pretty. It's like a warm white. It's like white mixed with yellow ochre and a little bit of. It's already made. It's a, it's called John Brilliant by Holbein. It's like a white warm. But appreciate you guys' suggestions here. It's pretty helpful. I feel like we're collaborating a bit here, trying to... You guys are critiquing me, trying to get me on the right path for this thing. Reflected light down here, maybe some lights here. A little too much there, but that's okay. Like I said, we're just playing around here. We're trying to see, you know, what, how, how can we make this thing come to life a bit more. That's all. A little bit of light at the right corner post, like up here. Yeah, I don't know. There are some, uh, I wonder if I can add some really bright red. It's gonna be pretty difficult, but I'm gonna try it. Go pretty thick with the paint here. I wonder if I can add these little lights. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see those. They don't look like light, they just look like dots. They'd have to be like white in the middle, maybe. Or not maybe, probably, actually. Oh well, just trying, just trying things, folks. Just trying things here. Mm. There we go. We'll put some texture on the bridge. With some lights going up. That's kind of cool. All right, I'm pretty happy with this one now. I think I'm a little more happy with it now. You guys agree? Actually, I don't care if you guys agree. <laughs> I'm just kidding.
Okay, well, uh, there is some light down here, like really pink light. I don't know if I could add that. And there's the light down here too. I could add that bright red down there. Let's see if some bright red might work. You know, I don't know why, but. Uh, it's really hard for you guys to see that. Uh, yeah, get some bright red. But maybe if I can put some pink inside of that. Does that work at all? Probably not as well as I want it to. Yeah, it needs like more of a glow, but yeah. I think I'm gonna call this one done, folks. I don't know that there's much, you know. There's not much more I can do here without like just being distracting from what I'm trying to achieve. <laughs> yeah, it is rare, Philip. Oh, I think I'm going to get off here, guys. But uh, thank you guys for hanging in here with me and, and working through this one. I know it's it pretty challenging for me. I know it's a long episode for you guys, pretty annoying. Trying to work through all these problems, but you know, that's it's a reality. Sometimes you're not gonna have a painting that just finishes itself, so to speak. You know, sometimes you gotta work at it and just try to do your best, just try to do your best. And that's what I tried to do. That's all I could do. Just trying to do my best. I think things were just a little too flat and I tried to fix that at the end, you know, trying to add some dimension to this stuff. Shadows and things and the highlights. So a little more texture. I think we did something good, hopefully. Um, Probably still missing a little bit of something we could do, but anyway, I guess that's where we we call this one done. Um, maybe not. Why is there always more to do? I wanna I wanna push. I want to push the temperature here if I can. You guys probably can't even see that. I don't know why I'm doing this. All right. I think you guys get it. There we go. Okay. We'll call this one done. But uh, thanks for hanging in there, everybody. Be sure to check out my website, like I said. And, uh, Got all kinds of stuff on there. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, before I get off here, I'll show you guys one last time. Here's the finished painting. I could have darkened the sky a bit more you know, over here. That's probably the only other thing I could do. But we'll call this one done. Uh, I knew at the very beginning I said it. I should have made the sky darker. You know, tried to make it dark, but it always dries lighter. But uh, we'll add this one to the collection, and we'll just keep on keeping on. You know. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully for a pen and ink. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Take care of yourself. Peace.